first tonight, the Supreme Court has ruled once and for all same-sex marriage is a legal right of Americans. And right now, some people in Madison are celebrating. This is a live look at a rally happening right now put on by several groups, including the ACLU. Now that follows the Supreme Court's 5-4 ruling today that same-sex couples can marry anywhere in the U.S. and all states have to recognize those marriages. It was banned in 14 states until this decision today. And Wisconsin, of course, was not one of them. But as NBC15's Kate Pabbas shows us, people who have already married here are still feeling joy. Jen and Lee, we introduced you to Katie and Judy back in February of 2014, and we've followed them since then in their fight for marriage equality. Now, after a year and a half of ups, downs, appeals, and wins, they say they can't believe the high court has finally weighed in in their favor. No union is more profound than marriage. Reading the majority opinion by Justice Anthony Kennedy. For it embodies the highest ideals of love, fidelity, devotion, sacrifice, and family. Katie Haining and Judy Tramp fight back tears. In forming a marital union, two people become something greater than they once were. I think that's true. Because after loving each other for upwards of 30 years, their marriage can no longer be dissolved by simply crossing a state line. They ask for equal dignity in the eyes of the law, and the Constitution guarantees them that right. The pair were plaintiffs in the federal case that gave Wisconsinites the right to marry whoever they wanted. But now they're ecstatic to say they're not only married in Wisconsin, they're married in America. Being able to say, I'm her wife, we're married. It takes away every question people have of what our relationship is. So after a year and a half of cameras, courts, and controversy, Judy and Katie are just ready to be each other's ball and chain. I think we recede into the background and live as normal married couple would. Um, and just continue on with our life. But they say today's decision doesn't mean the fight is over. There's still a long way to go. Even with the decision today, there's a lot still left unanswered. Um, children's rights, um, adoption, um, being married and bringing a child in. There's a lot of legal things that still need to be cleaned up. For today, though, <laughs> they'll concentrate on the win. Living happily ever after, I think, is a good way to put it. But not everyone is pleased with the decision of the court today. I spoke with Jelaine Appling, president of Wisconsin Family Action. She says this decision is an embarrassment for our country, and this decision harms children who have to grow up without a mother and a father. We see what fatherlessness looks like every weekend in Milwaukee headlines. We've seen it in Baltimore. We've seen it in Ferguson. We've seen it all in every major uh, city across this country. Children without fathers, with, whose fathers set boundaries and provide direction and, and discipline for, for children. And that's so necessary to keep them out of trouble with the law and keep them from being a danger to themselves and to society at large. So for me, it's, it's a sad day. I'm, I'm, as I said, I'm embarrassed by the court. I'm, and I'm concerned about future generations of Americans. Appling adds that just like Roe versus Wade didn't stop the debate on abortion, she says this ruling will not stop the debate over marriage.